So yeah. you, so you're in Auckland still. Yeah. And yeah, you went still to in you went to NZCC. Yep. How long ago did you graduate? So I graduated in 2015. Um, Got it. So I did my what's well, five year degree. The first year is done outside of the university at in New Zealand. So you have to do like a pre med year. So you do that at one of right. the other uh, major universities, and then once you've finish that then you can apply to go to the college itself and then you spend four years there first two are your kind of your academic years and then your last two years are the uh, more practical you're in the um, chiropractic center actually adjusting people dealing with patients kind of meant to be like real life practice but it's not at all <laughs> no yeah yeah now i i remember reading something a while back about new zealand and the i think it was the front desk software that they use and I, okay. it, because I think it was somebody mentioning, oh, that the, this is what they got to use. And I, it made me wonder. So when you're in clinic, how much do you do? How, other than treating the patients, are you doing any billing? Are you, you know, are, do you work the front desk at all? Do you? No. So as part of our training during second year, we have to spend um, a period of time. Um, I forget, I think it's 15 hours on the front desk. Um, so we actually have to learn how to do all the billing, uh, you know, do that whole side of processing so we understand the process of being a CA. Um, but when we're actually an intern, that's handled by everybody else. Okay, but um, at some point you do get yeah. that that experience. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Yeah, you absolutely do. Um, and then part of it is, I mean, because there's only, when I was there, there were only three CAs to handle, you know, there was 12 interns on a shift. So if a patient was running late or they missed or canceled, you were the one who had to follow it up. They, they weren't going to follow up that patient and call them for you. So oh, that was all our responsibility. Yeah. What would the CAs be doing? Uh, they're all front desk handling, billing, booking the next appointment. All right. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And because everything was done in kind of 10 or 20 minute slots, every 10 or 20 minutes, they'd have 12 people come to the front desk and three people would have to process them all and then they would leave and then the next you know, 12 people would turn up or so. Right. And so you'd have about 12 student interns on staff at any given time. Yeah. Yeah. In, in our year, and our year was quite small. Um, so there was a change in the um, intake when we arrived with Australia and then also international laws studying in New Zealand. Um, so our class dropped by about 30 people, mm. which we just kind of went through a small year. The following year was a little bit smaller as well. Um, so we were about 45, 40 students. Uh, whereas now they're back up to their kind of 70 to 80, which is what suits them really well. Okay. So they'll end up having probably 20 people on a shift. Okay. So that's a little more in line with what my experience was. But we had no, mm. almost no uh, option to get involved on the front desk end of it on the billing. Oh, really? Which, from what I understand here, the billing is much more complicated because there's multiple different insurance panels and, you know, workers' yeah. comp versus personal injury and all these different things. Um, and that was something that, now that I'm in practice, I'm finding it's probably more important of an education in a lot of ways. Yeah. Because I don't, still, I've avoided insurance for a long time other than when I'm doing locum tenens work. Um, I don't, I, I don't know how to do it. Like, I, I don't even know how to get credentialed yet with the insurance panels. I've sure. started going through that, that process, but it's so complicated and I talked with my wife who's, you know, did medical school in New Zealand and it's just it makes things so nice when you have that, uh, yeah. you know, that socialized healthcare or the single payer, I guess. Yeah, exactly. It makes it in New Zealand. It's very, very easy. Basically, you have something called the ACC, which is the accident compensation corporation. Right. So if anyone has a trip or fall or anything and they have an injury, um, they're covered under ACC automatically. Um, so that's a it's it's kind of an insurance company, but it's run by the government. Sure. So everyone has it. So that makes things very very easy because everything just goes through that. And then if anyone has personal insurance, we give them an invoice and they invoice the insurance company themselves. So we don't oh. have to deal with any of that kind of drama at all, which is really nice. <laughs> so in that case, would the patient pay up front and then they would yeah. get reimbursed by insurance? Okay. Yeah, and that's that's, that's something that we would call a super bill where. The patient does pay out of pocket, which is really appealing in a lot of ways because they can use their insurance, but as the doctor and the clinic, you don't have to mess with the insurance. Exactly. So that's yeah. kind of what I've been doing or leaning towards at least. Yeah. 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 It'll be interesting to see with uh, the recent election how things change. 
Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I but, guess that does kind of throw things up in the air. Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. But now and then, my wife and I talk about mm, what would it be like if we moved down to New Zealand just to sure. to see how it goes. Um, have you Why been not? outside of New Zealand? I've I've been to a few different places. Um, not really looking at anything chiropractic wise, um, but I've been to Australia to look at things chiropractically. Um, but you know, like I've been on holidays to a few different destinations, the mm-hmm. islands around here. I've been to Hawaii once, which I guess is the closest to America yeah. as I've been. <laughs> <laughs> which I don't know if it really represents America, but but it's, uh, it's the closest. Uh, yeah, I mean, technically it's a part, so it is. Yeah. It is the States. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, Australia has rep- rep- what's the word now? Repros- reciprocity? reciprocity, where the license are recognized in both countries is that right yep okay yep, that's right so yeah so so when we graduate i forget what the actual um endorsement is it's like jcaa or, or whatever, whatever the organization is um but they recognize in terms of qualification how educated are you um all the australian colleges as well as ours so, so as soon as i get registered i'm recognized in new zealand i'm the same in australia um the only thing is i have to pay to be part of the association over there Got Which it, right. Fine. So did you ever look into going to school in Australia versus New Zealand? Uh, no, because uh, we have something called um, StudyLink, uh, which is basically where we get all of our university fees paid for um, and they're interest-free as long as we stay and work in New Zealand. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you mind talking about what the average students may, uh, what, what the average cost of tuition is? Sure. So for an NZCC grad, you're probably looking about a hundred thousand dollars, between eighty and a hundred. Okay, and yeah. the dollar right now is, I want to say, so that would be almost equivalent to one eighty. Am I kind yeah, of yeah. in the right area there? Yeah, I think it's it would about be around 1. about 8. that. So that's yeah. not. It, it, it all kind of comes down to living expenses as well. So so under mm. that scheme, you can actually claim living expenses and, and get some money to help you pay for rent or food or whatever, um, which is what I did because I've moved cities away from home. Um, so that bumped my my amount up a little bit because it wasn't just for my course fees, um, but that's pretty common. Right, right. I think that's what most students here do. Uh, but interest-free yeah. is, that's a huge plus. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's really good. So it, it just sits there. The, the interest does accrue, um, but as long as you stay and work in New Zealand, they write it off. Interesting. So, okay. Yeah. Sure. So that's what in the U.S. would be a subsidized loan. Although our subsidized loans, where the interest doesn't accrue, is only during school. So okay. six months after you graduate, then, and I don't remember whether it, it back accrues, like whether all that time in school. I don't think it does. But then it starts to accrue interest, and so the average uh, chiropractic student in the U.S. is graduating with somewhere around. 200 maybe just under 200,000 but then by the time that interest accrues over the 10 to 20 year payoff period mm-hmm. it's it can get close to $500,000 in the end which yeah easy yeah, yeah. that's a lot that's it, a that's a big moment and, and how does that compare to the average income for a chiropractor in in New Zealand uh, pretty reasonable so so as a graduate first year out you're probably expected to be earning around about $50,000, um, okay. maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, depending on if you're, um, say, more in a rural environment right. um, or, or a city, and depending, obviously, on your patient numbers. Um, and some of my colleagues have graduated and their practices have just skyrocketed um, and are, yeah, you know, easily seeing over 100 patients a week and you know, doing really, really well. And financially, that's just not an issue for them anymore. Sure. Um, but then there's others who haven't got that opportunity. They're still kind of working through the process and it's a little bit slower and more difficult for them. So there's a massive big spectrum of, of what's actually out there. Um, and it kind of depends on what the primary Cairo is hiring you to do. So most of us end up being an associate. Um, mm-hmm. Some of us have opened up our own practices um, and then obviously a few have gone back overseas. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there's a big spectrum, but that's kind of the average. Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of on par. Uh, yeah. Depending on the region, I'm finding that regions are uh quite varied in some areas i would say around around where i'm at on average just kind of the standard new grad position is in between 30 to 40,000 yeah it's just kind of what i'm seeing i mean that's 
by no means yeah. a, a large sample size. Uh, sure. But but yeah, with so so how long does it? Do you have a term to pay off those loans? Uh, is it a ten year loan or is it just? Well, with no interest accrual, well, like, what's the point? Why don't you just? Yep. Uh, so the, the the way that it works is, um, as you as you earn money, you have to pay twelve percent of your earnings towards that loan. Oh, interesting. So it's a percentage yeah. of your earnings. Percentage of your earnings, you by by law as part of your tax, how that comes through is they'll they'll chase you for that. So whatever you declare, you have to put twelve percent towards that loan. And does that uh, is that then on top of income tax and other federal taxes? Okay, yep. okay, yeah. that's on top of everything else. Um, so in New Zealand, it's uh, it's a PAYE system. So we pay yeah. uh, probably depending on your pay scale, it kind of goes up, but it's between fifteen and thirty percent tax, um, and then you get the twelve percent on top of that. Okay, yeah, interesting. We have a similar one, but it's uh, not as clear cut as that. So I like that that it's just okay. a flat percentage. Is yep. so you know and what you, it's going you, to be all the time. Pay more. If you want to pay more, of course you can, um, but most people don't because it's interest free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's that's very cool. Yeah. So, what led you to get into chiropractic? That's an excellent question. Uh, when most people ask me that, I tend to say I think chiropractic found me mm. more than I found it. Um, so I always knew that I wanted to get into health in some form or another. Both my parents are, are heavily in the health field. Um, and I knew that I wanted to help people and I, I was really interested in them. Um, just didn't really know what avenue that was. So originally was going to become a GP and go down to Otago, New Zealand to study down there because I've got a really, really yeah. good, reputable school. Yeah, um, that's, where my, that's where my wife went. So Yeah, yeah, yeah Otago. So it's, it's good. So it's, I've been there yeah, actually. Very, very we, good school. I walked around nice. campus for about an hour yeah. and then that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a it's a beautiful New Zealand city. Uh, very much a university city. When it's study time, the city population probably doubles. <laughs> and then when it's break, it, yeah, it's just the locals. Um, but yeah, beautiful city. Um, but I talked to a few of my colleagues who went there, or well, a few of my classmates who went there a year before me, and they were just having a horrible time with the competition and um, everything getting really, really intense in that medical school environment. Um, I just ah, that's not really me um, you know I, I wanted to be in a place not not when necessarily things are all kind of happy and everyone everything's going fine but but without that kind of intense competition it just sounded like they were having a bad time uh, and I got a girlfriend as well so that inspired me to stay in Christchurch my hometown <laughs> <laughs> so I stayed there and I did a psychology degree um, and got to the end of that after three years and so our normal degrees are three years not four in New Zealand by the way as well um, so that was my my normal bachelor's um, so after kind of getting to the end of that, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, I just had no idea. I was kind of searching around for different options. Um, and then I, I forget who it is, but one of my buddies mentioned chiropractic. And I thought, oh, you know, that's interesting. I was looking into all different types of modalities at that point um, and chatted with a couple of chiropractors, found out that the New Zealand college was in New Zealand. Um, but my science degree didn't have enough science in it. Mm. So I was potentially going to have to do another year of study, uh, which I didn't want to do. Um, so I looked at some summer school papers, and I could actually do, if I studied it um, through online learning through Australia, I could actually do a full year med school in summer school, uh, which I wouldn't recommend to anyone because that was <laughs> ridiculously hard. But it doesn't sound like a good it. idea, yeah. No, no, it was not a good idea. There were there were many long, long hours, sleepless nights, trying to get all the work done. But I got through it, which is lucky. But it, it kind of... Um, it just worked. Like It's kind of like the universe aligned. It was like, oh, you want to do this? Well you can you know here's the papers that you can do and it all works and fits and can be subsidied or, or paid for quite easily um you know here's flights that that fit in because i had to go to australia to do some of the course mm -hmm. that meant that you could go there and then come back and still start the year at new zealand college in perfect time um so yeah it all, all just kind of worked so i guess i just kind of got caught up in being dragged in the right direction if you will <laughs> yeah. you know i'm starting to just observationally piece together these stories and it seems for those people who almost fall into chiropractic by accident which you're kind of yeah. in that position okay. they yeah. they tend to be the ones that stick around for the longest period of time and and do it's the just, most with with their yeah. career um whereas a lot of people who uh planned on planned on doing it for a while 
and I'm in that boat. I'm hoping that that my <laughs> yeah. hypothesis does not come true with this one. But yeah. Um, yeah, but they tend to have maybe shorter careers in it. Um, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I mean, I definitely see that that first piece of it more often is that I, I've interviewed a couple people recently on the podcast uh, who are really well known in the states and did just. They, you know, it wasn't like a uh, family business or, you know, they didn't have other people in the family that were chiropractors. They just, someone said, hey, why don't you try this? They said, sure, why not? <laughs> and then they, I, yeah, you just get caught up by the idea. I, I've yeah. never been adjusted before until six months after I started my course. Um, after you so started did, the course. Yeah. <laughs> I had no, I had no idea. I was so green getting in. That um, blew me away. I had a couple of yeah. classmates when I first started that they were the same. They had never been adjusted. Um, it, wow. I don't, I mean, yeah. I don't know what to say. Like, because for me, I, you know, I first saw a chiropractor third grade, you know, it was probably seven or eight, uh, something like that. And I went fairly regularly and then didn't go quite as often until high school. And then I started going every week. Um, and so I was, you know, I was so familiar with it that I guess it, it just surprises me that someone who's not experienced what it is it yeah. would, would just go right in and all in and, and dedicate themselves to it. So that's impressive in a lot of ways. Well, thank you very much. I, yeah, I hope that uh, your premonition does come true and I do stay with this forever. Cause, well, for me, it's, um, yeah, I, I really have fallen in love, fallen in love with it um, w without, without it being a prospect or an idea. Um, you know, none of my family regularly see chiropractors. Well, they do now. <laughs> when I started, but, but, you know, before I started, it's just, it just wasn't part of my spectrum or my reality at all. Um, but I do find it really interesting talking with people who have had that, you know, it's, it's been part of their childhood. They've grown up with it. It's, it's completely normalized and there's things that you guys do who've, who've had chiropractic forever which is very different from what i would say you know the, the rest of the population or, or me for example who didn't grow up with it and i think it comes down to like a couple of things like it's it's definitely certainty you've just experienced it it's just part of you you just get it mm -hmm. um whereas definitely there were a lot of doubts for me through a lot of different things just because you know um different types of patients come through that you just go i just really don't think I can help you. I, I mean, I've never experienced uh, it before. I've never seen anyone who can benefit in this way. Um, whereas, you know, say for example, my, my primary chiropractor who, um, Ken Blackbourne, he, um, you know, his dad was a chiropractor, his brother's a chiropractor, there's 30 something chiropractors in the family. He just, you know, it's one of those chiropractic families, right? But he just assumes that, yeah, of course it'll work. Right, yeah, of right. course, of course, you know, you, you get that kind of chiropractic lifestyle and um, less medications, immunizations, whatever you whatever you want to talk about. But it's they just um, tend to be more help, healthy and, and go get them and, and doing all these kind of big things internationally um, because that's normal. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, that just certainly wasn't my reality when I was younger. So I'm curious what, what types of things led to you having doubt about whether chiropractic could help with that and then has that changed since then sure uh so for example baby presenting with um uh not nursing properly uh really unsettled um just having an awful you know early experience in life six weeks old parents kind of come to you with this unhappy cradle baby who just isn't you know isn't healthy um and like, i've I've never adjusted a baby before. You know, mm -hmm. you have like the models and peds class, and you have a few like three, four year olds who you do a little bit of activator with. But you know, I'd never, never experienced that. Um, so it was it was things like that, which is very confronting. Going, I know the theory, but I've never experienced this. This is a conversation that I've had with people, and yes, I, you know, I, I, obviously from coming from NCCC, you kind of get. Uh, 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 deep into the philosophy of chiropractic and and how it works and you know yes I believe it works but I've never experienced it with my hands um, so it's it's that kind of thing so you're kind of doing this going I hope but it works out really well I mean chiropractic's incredibly safe and the baby mm -hmm. turned out to be very very happy and healthy and a few adjustments later the parents were like you're the greatest um, yeah, which is yeah. nice for the ego but the reality <laughs> is you know, you're just you're just doing what anyone would do right you just care and you just look after them um, yeah but it's things like that. Um, yeah, that you just, because I had never had any experience of that, um, when that comes into your office, you just go, I don't know. 
Um, whereas I imagine for someone like yourself, who's, you know, been as a kid, seen more kids, just had it part of your life, that's normal. That's, yeah, it's interesting you bring that up because in this, uh, you know, I mentioned to you that I listened to your podcast with Brian Lanou, uh, nice. your last episode, and you, yeah. you touched on this a little bit and that there's differences in the style of practice and the approach of practice between schools. And th this is part of the reason I started my podcast is mm. that I wanted to explore that. I wanted to see uh, you know, what are students in uh, Barcelona learning compared to students in Denmark. Yeah. Which, are, which are, is a good example of very opposites. And, and I think that's the case very for me. So. And so, uh, yeah, I, I definitely grew up with that uh, um, experience of chiropractic. My mom had hay fever and started to go, to go to a chiropractor. And I don't know how long it took, but she's never complained of it since. Um, wow. My dad, on the other hand, has had chronic low back pain and mm. still has chronic low back pain. Like there's nothing that's really yeah. helped him, including three vertebral fusions, um, wow. okay. despite going to a chiropractor quite regularly. Uh, mm. And and now, you know, after going through chiropractic college, um, I'm, I think I experience a lot of that doubt still. I think when it comes to the case of an infant, especially that young, that's something that I'm not, I don't feel trained for, and I don't feel very comfortable adjusting a kid who's, for me personally, eh, the other day, I think there's a four-year-old, but even that's kind of reaching for me. Mm. And so I'm, cu I'm curious to find out um, how you overcome that doubt and, and what changes it. You mentioned that you just went ahead and did the adjustment and the experience turned out well. Uh, so is that enough for you to change your opinion of, of whether chiropractic works in those specific cases? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was, it was never that I doubted chiropractic would work. I knew chiropractic would work. I just doubted whether I could do it. Ah, right, <laughs> I, right. I think that's where it, it certainly came from. Um, just because of, you know, the inexperience of my hands, you know, I haven't been a graduate for that long. I've never seen a patient like that before. Um, so you can't help but but doubt because it's mm -hmm. it's not part of my not part of my reality. It's it's not part of what I've ever experienced before, um, and especially when you've got you know th these two parents looking at you with pleading eyes, saying you know help us. We've been to everyone else and they haven't seemed to work yet. <laughs> you go, I don't know. Interesting. I really right. don't know. Um, so so it was more yeah it was more uh, um, an anxiety on my personal part. Can I do the best for these people? Because I, I really, really want to. Mm. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. So that's where that doubt came from. Whether chiropractic would work or not, I knew they'd be fine. Um, and if I didn't get results quickly, then I'd refer them to another chiropractor who, who may be able to get better results mm. um, for that kid. But but very fortunate for me, um, you know, I, I found the appropriate subluxations and adjusted them nicely. And um, so the way that we're taught, so we do a, a six-month kids chiropractic course. And that's included and then, in your curriculum. In our curriculum, yeah. yeah, and as well as that, we have to see a certain number of um, under five-year-olds. Um, so that's that's part of our recognition, and, and the same with older people as well. So we have to see we do a, a, a full six-month geriatric course, and we have to see a certain number of sixty-five-plus-year-olds. Um, okay. So that's just part of part of the requirements when we're graduating. And um, does that so include that, specific adjusting technique for those populations? Yep. Okay, I'm yeah, trying yeah. to. So you have, because we you definitely have, have a geriatrics course. I'm trying to remember now. I think we have a pediatrics, but mm. there was no adjusting. You mentioned you have like adjusting dolls, maybe pediatric dolls yeah. to practice on. Yeah. I've never seen one. You can take right. specialized courses that's continuing education, you know, the, sure. a seminar you'd have to pay for, but not in the curriculum. And that's part of the yeah. reason I'm not comfortable with it as I've never... It's never done it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Until yeah. someone walks to you and goes, help me. You go, right. Hey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I mean, yeah, that, that was one case that was extreme. I'd, I'd say, um, you know, I don't see too many kids. Kent does because uh, he's done his postgraduate um, pediatric diploma, which is the whatever the, the three-year course to become a specialist in it. Mm. Um, he sees a lot more children than, than I do. Um, but you know, I've, I've definitely seen a few, some of my patients have known someone or whatever and they've, they've referred them in to see me um, and gotten good results, which is, which is great. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd say, yeah, I love kids, um, 
but again it's just because it's not part of my reality i probably don't attract them that much <laughs> um, so I, I wouldn't have a, a large uh, child population i'd just see probably two every couple of months or something okay okay mm-hmm. yeah yeah um I'm st- I'm still kind of, if it's okay to continue talking about this. I mean, yeah, you mentioned please. that by the time say this child came to you, you were pretty confident in the abilities of chiropractic, maybe not yourself in particularly, but you'd only been in chiropractic school by then for no more than 4 years, I'd imagine. Maybe yeah. uh, th- this was 6 months after I'd graduated. So this was halfway oh, okay. through Okay, so year. this was after you had graduated. So okay. this was while I was in practice. Um yeah, at college I had nothing like that. I had a few 4-year-olds, mm. a uh, couple of like 8 to 10-year-olds. Um and for me like adjusting that kind of size person, I'll I'll adjust them manually, I'll use activator, yeah. I'll use touch and hold, whatever. It just depends on the kid. Um cuz by that time, I mean, that kids are super stretchy. I'm pretty comfortable adjusting them as long as it's safe <laughs> and there's no contras. They bounce um, back, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like I've never had any <laughs> any kind of worry or fear with that because it's like you know, like these two brothers were coming in to check, um, get checked because they were crazy and bouncing off walls, and the mum was like, maybe this will calm them down, um, and it did. Like as soon as I cleared Atlas with them, um, you know, they were they were way more chilled. But you know, before they'd come in, they'd be tearing up the waiting room, and then we had a bit of open plan area, so they'd be jumping between tables to get to the other side of the room mm. and back, and just mental. And, you know, they'd fall and smash, and I'm like. I'm way more gentle than what they're doing to each other. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. I'm pretty sure they'll be fine, yeah. yeah. Right. And I often wonder to myself, you know, as I'm thinking about doing an adjustment on a child, um, and, and I'm confident that it's safe, uh, but yeah. I wonder what, what does it do? Because the force is decreased compared to an HVLA on an adult. And if the kid is bouncing around off the walls, how is that light force or pressure mm. uh, going to make a change when all of what they're doing throughout the day and falling and getting hurt and all of these things are what I would assume to be much higher forces. Mm. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. I think it's really interesting. I think that's a really interesting topic. Um, for me, what makes sense to me is it's the about the intent and mm. also if it actually works. Um, so I'm a really results driven guy. I, I care about results. I care about results for my patients. So I have as many measures as I can handle to figure out is, is my adjustment success, successful or not? Um, so again, kind of jumping back to that doubt thing, am I good enough? Am I going yeah. to be able to provide the best care for my patients? I have to have a lot of measures to say that yes, I am. <laughs> so so that, that comes down to a lot of different things. You know, is the body performing better? Is the posture performing better? Um, you know, depending on, so say for a kid, for example, then it's subjective reports from the parents, seeing what they're about, um, talking to the kid to see what notice, uh, what changes that they notice themselves, um, and then, then looking at their kind of general mood or exterior. So, so usually I find the kids that I'm checking are kind of in that kind of um, hyper state a lot. So I want to see that if I'm adjusting them, then they're calmer and more. Do they even. calm down? Yeah. Uh, I've lost you. Totally lost the connection. Call dropped hey. right there. <laughs> <laughs> we lost you. I, do we, is, um... Zencaster should still be going. Okay. Uh, yeah. Even if you lose internet connection, it'll keep recording. So. Okay. That's cool. So that should be mm-hmm. still working there. Mm-hmm. I will put this back up. That means... So just give me one second. I'm just going to restart my recording on this end. And you may need to switch the Skype mic input again. Oh, is it so? Okay. Yeah. I'll Sounds it like it's... Um, yeah. Seven, eight, two. <coughs> Where are we? Skype. Call all your settings. Excuse me. No. no, apparently it's still... Is it? Okay. Apparently, it's still on the that one. Should be right. All right, sounds good. Cool. So, um, just jumping in 
very dismissed doctor. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so so for me it was, yeah, it, it's just about outcome issues for the patients. Mm-hmm. So so how how do they improve? Because if they do improve, great, then I'm doing my job properly. Um, but if they're not, then I'm I'm missing something. I might not be the right practitioner for them. So do I refer? Um, do they need some kind of other concurrent care? Um, is there some kind of irritation in their diet? Something else that they need to to look into doing. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. So over that time from being someone who had no experience with chiropractic, uh, where was that point where you developed that confidence, developed that, um, that belief that chiropractic can work? That's a really good question. I think it happened when I was in my, so just, just before, so it's what we'd call like CP, CP1, um, which is when we're just starting our internship. We can only see student patients. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you, you've done all this training and all this academics for years and years, and you've dedicated all this time and energy towards it. Um, and, yeah, it was you kind of have that kind of like, is this the right thing? Am I in the right place? I, I'm not a good chiropractor. Or I, you know, all that kind of stuff that happens when you're in that stage. Um, I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, but there was this – pivotal moment um there's this pivotal moment I, I guess i was you know going for a walk or there was something i was by myself um and just all of a sudden it's i, th- I think just things just kind of clicked for me and i went ah that's right i'm i'm here to do this this that's that's my path mm. um and it's yeah kind of at the time caught me off guard as a big Hairy audacious kind of dream that I uh, that I definitely want to achieve, um, and then walking, working, walking, and working towards. Um, but yeah, it just became something that was bigger than me, um, that I felt I was part of. Um, I went, okay, well, I guess this is me now. Not expected, but okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'll follow it. It feels like the right thing. Um, and I guess maybe that that's what can come across from this. I'm coming maybe a little bit. But yeah, I, I um, when. The universe says go in that direction. You kind of just have to trust it sometimes, I think. Um, and, that, and that's what it came down to. It went, okay, yeah, this is it. I, I came to this pivotal moment of is this the right thing? Questioning yourself, questioning your decisions as an adult. You know, should I be doing all of this? Um, and then it became, yeah, no, this is this is what I was born to do. Um, and I better get damn good at it because I'm not there yet. <laughs> <laughs> and had you ever considered what would have happened if you, if you never reached that that pivotal point yeah. i mean yeah yeah i would have, i would have stopped um oh, yeah. probably become a pilot or something <laughs> something else that I'm to them, you know it, yeah it just wouldn't have been for me because i'll tell you what being a chiropractor is hard work yeah it's hard work um there's a, there's a lot of responsibility to it you know you're, you're dealing with um you know a lot of the time human suffering and pain and and difficulties and and to be able to do that every day and help people every day uh, that's a lot of responsibility on yourself um, so yeah, there's there's easier jobs out there <laughs> if if that's what people are looking at. But um, I think if you you know if you're really called to it, if you're really interested in it, if you if you really are passionate and excited about what it is that we do, yeah, the the negative sides just diminish in in respect to what you can actually achieve. Um, and it's fun. Like I I find practice fun. That's that's the main mm. thing that keeps me going. Is I love my patients. I, I love going and hanging out with them, and um, and you know they've become, yeah, they've become kind of part of the family now, right? Right, right. Yeah, a lot of a lot of chiropractors just become close friends with their patients and see them mm. regularly. Now, yeah. do you? Ooh, I almost spilled my exogenous ketones on my keyboard. That would not have been good. <laughs> Don't want to do that. <laughs> Um, would you say you're running a higher volume practice? Are you, how many patients are you seeing per week? No, I, I wouldn't say I'm a high volume. Um, so currently I'm kind of averaging about 50 patients a week or so. Okay. Um, and, and that's after a year of practice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I mean, there's various reasons for that. I can guess I can dive into it. But the, the biggest thing for me is uh, new patient generation um, and working in the area that I'm in in getting more referrals, getting getting that community and more involved in chiropractic and, and having them know what it is that we actually do. Um, there's a couple of chiropractors in the area. Uh, the practice that I'm at has actually been there in the area for 64 years. Um, 
so they get it, uh, but it's just not really penetrated into the community very much. Um, so, and because there's always been one Cairo there, uh, you know, he hasn't really ever had to do any major marketing apart from a couple of screenings a year, putting something in a newspaper every now and again. Um, and that's always been enough for him. And he, he does run a high volume practice. Um, but to add me in and as, as an associate, uh, there wasn't a lot of overflow um, from the community coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's been definitely a, a big factor for me over the last year is working on that and getting things um, kind of grooving. And they, they definitely started picking up at the end of last year um, and even more so now. So we'll keep getting up and up. How um, how big is the city that you're living in? You said you're in Auckland. Are so I'm, you I'm up North, in the mountains, uh, so, or are you just right in the town, right in the city? Uh, no, so, so I, I live close to the city, uh, but where I practice is um, about 20 minutes drive south. Uh, or if you're from the actual city center, it's about 30 minutes drive south. Um, so it's right on the southern border of the city, uh, and it's definitely a commuter's belt. Uh, so a lot of people driving into the city for work and then, mm-hmm. then coming back. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's just one of those one of those populations. I mean, okay. there's, I think there's ten thousand people in the Papakura area, um, but it's only a little bit further south of Manuka City, which is kind of a big um, hub for the the South Auckland area. Um, I wouldn't know what the equivalent would be in Portland, but mm-hmm. <laughs> if you can, um, yeah, uh, yeah, if you can kind of imagine a, a suburb that's kind of on the outskirts of the city, right. Um, not the highest socioeconomic area, um, but definitely a lot of kind of farmland around. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it is a little more of a suburb and, and not as populated. Um, this is something no. that I've, I, I think about a lot now is uh, what's the saturation of chiropractors in the area? And so in the city that I live in outside of Portland, uh, Last check, and I, I should double check that I'm correct about this. I may be misreading it, but there were about 400 chiropractors in a population wow. of a few, maybe 100 to 200,000, I think. So. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. And so you drive a couple of blocks and you pass a couple of chiropractors. I mean, there's no yeah. shortage of clinics. Uh, and so, no. yeah, I'd That's be interesting. curious yeah, we, to see how we that have works. 560 chiropractors in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. So if there's like 400 in around your area, that's, that's like that's <laughs> almost all of us. <laughs> right, right, right. In the same number. Um, yeah. yeah, and so there's there's definitely the need to set yourself apart in some way to market. Yeah. Um, not that there's a shortage of chiropractors by any means, but patients aren't utilizing them as as much as we need them to as a profession. I mean, being that many chiropractors, but having a eight to ten percent utilization rate, meaning eight to ten percent of the population have ever gone to one, then yeah, there's an issue with with getting patients in the door. So, yeah, well, I I find that a really interesting stat. And I, I mean, I'd be, I I imagine America's maybe a little bit different, but definitely here in New Zealand, if you look at all the patient files in a practice, there's thousands of patient files. There's thousands of people mm-hmm. who have come through, um, but who are current active patients in the practice? Um, so when I look at that kind of stuff, I, I, I really want to understand, well, you know, you've, you've had literally thousands of people come through your doors in, say, the last five, 10 years. Um, and, and why, say, we have this 8%, whatever percentage saturation rate in the, in the population, why are they the only ones who are still using it? Whereas mm-hmm. if you look at reality, you, you've prob- in, in your community, you've probably seen maybe, well, in, in our community, I know, we've probably seen half the people there come mm-hmm. through our practice over the last 15 years. Um, but why is it that only, you know, 400 of them to 500 of them still come in regularly? Right, right. Yeah. So that, for me, that's really, I don't know why. I'd mm. love to figure that out. Because, you know, every individual, I guess, their story, they, they have their thing that they need. If they are in, say, back pain like your dad, um, you know, they, they want to get out of it. And if the chiropractor helps them with that and resolves that issue, maybe they then think that's all that chiropractic was for and they stop. Um, so I can understand that example because it's pretty basic. But I think there's other reasons for it. And I'd really love to figure out, you know, what is it? What Why is it that, that a lot of people have seen a chiropractor, um, but not a lot of them continue to see the chiropractor right they don't see it as an ongoing 
treatment. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. And it, again, that kind of comes to this concept of is is chiropractic a wellness uh, practice? Is it is it something that you do use for general health, or is it mm. something that is utilized for specific issues? And I think there's what, what's the what's the environment like where you're practicing? Like what what do people like if you asked the general public, just someone on the street, what is a chiropractor? What, mm. what would they say? Because there's a lot of you around. There are, yeah. Think. And I've been, yeah. I've been considering doing exactly that. Yeah. You know, there's all these uh, YouTube videos of going around and just talking to people on the street, asking them silly questions or legitimate questions. And I think it would be very interesting. I don't know that that's, it's certainly not scientific, but I think it would definitely give some insight. Um, if I yeah. were to guess around here, the most common reason is for auto accidents. And then beyond that, uh, yeah, there certainly is a trend or, or a, an assumption that chiropractic is for back pain. Certainly throughout the United States, that is the case, um, back or neck pain. It's the same here, except not auto accidents. It's they, mm -hmm. they would come to us if their back hurts, um, they'll come and see us. And yeah, yeah, that's that's basically it, which yeah. seems insane to me. Because that was <laughs> and why why is that? That was never my experience of chiropractic from the beginning. It's oh like, really? I, I never experienced pain. You know, I, like why? You know, as soon as I started getting checked, the changes that I noticed were all, um, you know, functional changes. Like my sleep started to get better. I felt mm. that I could exercise for longer. Suddenly at the gym, I could lift things. I could lift heavier things. Um, you know, they, they were the measures that I got from chiropractic. So I naively thought, oh, that's what everyone notices, right? That's why everyone goes to the chiropractor. I mean, that's why I do. Um, and then, yeah, I was rudely awakened <laughs> yeah. when I graduated and got into the real world and, and looked, at the, looked at the patients around it and looked at who utilizes chiropractic. And unfortunately, it's a very, very small demographic mm -hmm. of people who are in pain. Right. Um, and it's difficult because it, that's different for everybody. I mean, I, again, I started going very regularly in high school and that was because I was studying voice. And so I was in, I was singing a lot and the voice teacher recommended going to a chiropractor. And yeah, I noticed that I could sing awesome. more easily, right? There wasn't all yeah. of this tension for my breathing as well as for my voice, which now there is because um, <laughs> I don't sing much anymore. Um, yeah. And the thing that would always, that I would always walk out of the office feeling was just that I could stand tall and then I yeah. could stand with good posture without having to force it. Yeah. But if you ask different people, it's always something different. You had better sleep, you know, in some clinics, I know Brian Lanou does this in his clinic up in Vancouver. They have their patients write on a little whiteboard and take a photo of what has improved. Yeah. And you can certainly see trends, but how can you then generalize that? How can you say to the general public, come in and you will get better sleep or come in and you will feel taller? Uh, so it makes it difficult to market that too. But, yeah, but what does. we can say is that chiropractic in most cases can help with spinal pain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, I, I think that comes down to, like if you look at the current paradigm of health, um, and this is that's part of my mission to help change this for, for the general public to, to actually understand more about their body and how it works and, and um, you know how to get the most out of their life. So the current model of health is very... Um, it's, it's dominated around there's something wrong with you, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have some condition, you have some weakness, whether that's congenital or developed through your life, and therefore you need some X, Y, Z treatment for that, uh, which for me I think works in a lot of cases, unfortunately. But it's become very, very predominant. Um, so most people go, right, well, I have a bowel issue where I'm not digesting properly, what do I do about that? There's something wrong with me. Do I then have to go for surgery or take medication to manage this? Um, as opposed to going, what's in my environment that's causing this imbalance in my system where I cannot digest whatever. I mean, say it's an old person, they can't digest B12 anymore because they're living on tea and toast. You know, mm -hmm. Nutritionally, they've just messed up their small intestine and they just can't absorb things properly anymore. If you're looking at that kind of case, well, that's an environmental factor. But if 
they go through what would be the normal routes for that kind of person they just the solution is you just get injected with b12 mm -hmm. and that never takes care of the cause of the problem um which in my mind just seems insane but that's what most people do um, and i think chiropractic we we fall into the same paradigm because we get stuck in this idea of obviously why are you in this you want to help people you want to make people you know feel better happier have a better quality of life so you give them what they want um, and it tends to be what they're asking for is hey doc can you fix me right um, now i think that's that's what i see as part of the problem um is that we go yes <laughs> as opposed <laughs> yeah. to going as opposed to going why did you get here in the first place mm-hmm um, uh, I totally yeah. agree. I think, especially in uh, the national healthcare system here, well, there isn't one, but but in, in the general <laughs> approach to healthcare, yeah. um, they like to frame it as preventive, and so yeah. they're doing all these screening tests. But that's not preventive at all. That doesn't prevent anything. It's preemptive. It finds it earlier than you would have if you had waited for symptoms to come on. Um, but oftentimes I wonder if, if we do something similar in chiropractic uh, because the adjustment doesn't necessarily prevent anything. No. It still is treating a symptom in a lot of cases. Sometimes the results may not be the symptom that we're addressing. Um, and so what is it, I mean, what is it that actually prevents things from happening? What, what prevents us from getting aches and pains or what prevents us from having nutritional deficiencies hmm. but that's an excellent question that's a million dollar question <laughs> or a trillion dollar question really oh, um, yeah yeah I, well, I i would say yeah would would chiropractic prevent things i think i think you live your life and stuff happens to you i don't think so we we treat people with symptoms i don't think we treat symptoms mm -hmm. um so for me all a symptom is it's just it's a sign from the body saying Hey, there's something really wrong. You need to do something about this. Like, so, so, like, what is pain? Like, you, you, you go into pain and try and study pain and try and figure out what it is. Well, it's just, a, it's just a, a neuroceptor, a, a nerve being irritated, and it's just a signal to the brain to say, "There's something wrong here. Do mm -hmm. something about this." Um, it's not like a physical thing. It's, it's not a, it's not a cell. It's not a, it's not a thing. It's, it's a manifestation of a, of a signal coming from your body. Um, so then, so, so, so where does that come from and how do people help with that? So, so I don't think it's that I'm treating the pain because I'm not, all I'm doing is I'm helping the body function better mm -hmm. and then it's sorting itself out. Um, which is maybe a slightly chiropractic philosophy way of just jumping around the question. So I wonder if I can answer <laughs> that better. Um, and I don't know yeah, that there, there is an answer. I think it's simply, yeah. um, what are we really doing um mm. because the you know again you go back to the history of it and it's this phrase of addressing the symptom not the cause or addressing the cause not the symptom yeah. right yeah. um but again i would i would argue that even a a subluxation is not always the cause because why is it there agreed and so uh, yeah agreed. just just curious. I mean, I'm trying to yeah. understand these Figure things myself, and I'm yeah. yeah it's it's uh, definitely is more of a philosophical approach. Yeah, certainly. And I, I mean, for me, I guess really lucky is um, obviously it's something that I'm interested in. So I I try and have this conversation as much as I can to try and figure it out. And and I certainly don't have answers. And I keep patient, and and things will open that kind of blow my mind or, or take me away and go, oh man, I I really thought this, but that's just not true anymore. Or it doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be true because it just either completely doesn't work with this patient, or I've had a result which I just completely didn't expect. So so my preconceptions about what is what i what i can do as a chiropractor suddenly become wrong or different um but i think what we can certainly say with a lot of certainty is chiropractic helps a lot of people yeah um and there's a lot of people out there who would benefit from our help who aren't getting it um so i, I definitely think that's true and then actually figuring out what exactly it is that we're doing and and why it seems to be getting all these different results for so many people like with me just feeling like my general mood had improved and i could do things in my life that i wanted to do with e better ease or with you singing which i i love that example as well so um 
my background uh, to impress my girlfriend. I, she was heavily into <laughs> dancing and singing, so uh, obviously I get into that too. Um, so I did a lot of musical theatre um, oh, in my good, young, good, yeah. younger days, yeah. um, and that's actually something that I found helped me as well. Like I, I could perform better because mm-hmm. it was easier. Like I could remember the choreography and the and the and the lyrics a lot easier and and do things with greater ease um, when I started getting checked compared to you know years before when I wasn't. Um, so the, like the kind of thing that I've experienced and that's because it's my personal experience that's where it comes from um, but the reality of what actually happens when I find a subluxation and adjust it how does that then change that process uh, um, even though I, th- I think the neurology is there there's the understanding of it but it's, it's actually putting all the bits and pieces together and then being able to tell that to the general public so that they understand and then they come in and get checked um We'll get there one day, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but yeah. Well, speaking of these conversations, I'm curious what started the Cairo station. What led you to start a podcast? Yeah, well, kind of, kind of similar, kind of similar to why you started yours, right? It, it was looking out there and trying to figure out what is this chiropractic thing. You know, why is there this big discrepancy between what I was taught and what other people are taught? I um, mean, I guess also, I mean, this is personally for me, I, uh, you can, you can yay or nay uh, whether or not, but because I wanted to learn more. Mm-hmm. Um, I wanted to interact with my other colleagues and, and have conversations like this and, and be asked interesting questions that I don't necessarily have the answer for or, um, you know, just, just people. Because when I got into practice, so it's something that I'd been thinking about doing for a long time, um, but just never had. Just thought, ah, you know, I'm not that great at it. Uh, you know, someone else will do it better. You just kind of put it to the side as a as a dream, right? I think that um, every time, every time, yeah, like, yeah, should right. I do another episode? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, good on you for doing it because I I think it's a really great resource that chiropractors can can kind of be a fly on the wall and and listen to conversations like these and and hopefully get something from it. Um, you know, spark an interest. Maybe they will have a great idea and email us and go come on dummy like why didn't you think of this this is how it works oh great i didn't realize that (laughs) i love when listeners Um, do that so please if you have an idea send it to me i'm always looking for new people to interview and new people or new topics to cover yeah exactly um but to answer your question in in a succinct way i did it because it wasn't out there and i wanted it and because i i wanted to be able to listen to conversations with chiropractors early graduates and, and people who've been out there for a long time um because i felt quite isolated uh, where I was, I, you know, all my friends had graduated and moved cities and countries. Um, so I wasn't surrounded by my, um, friends and classmates anymore. And I was just, just, just doing my thing. Um, wondering if everyone else was struggling like I was. Um, so I, I felt like that was worth sharing with other people. Um, so that's why I started it. It, mm. it was something that I wish that I had access to, but it wasn't out there. So I did it. So do it. Yeah. And that's what's so wonderful about today, having the technology we do, having the access with the internet. I mean, here we are talking freaking on other ends of the world. um, And you can do whatever it is that that you think of. And and that was something that I struggled with for a while. In fact, I remember uh, early on, probably the first year that I was in school, and I kind of got involved with the social media for the school, helping out with uh, nice. uh, some of the, it wasn't recruiters, but it was the the one or two people who would help the new students and kind of guide them, them along for the first few terms. And I remember going to them and saying, hey, I have this idea. We should interview people at other schools. Uh, do you think we could do that? And they're, you know... Obviously, oh, that's, yeah, you know, no. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I went back a couple times, and and I realized after a while I was trying to get permission to do it. And at some point I said, well, screw it. Why do I need somebody's permission? I'm just going to do it. <laughs> and, you know, I called a friend who was at a different school, and then I got different people emailing me and, and wanting to talk about their school. And it just, it happens, and I think... A lot of us wonder, we have that doubt about ourselves. Um, Can I do this? Should I do this? And sometimes it just takes trying it. And then awesome things happen. And so I've really enjoyed some of the episodes that you've done where you 
you're interviewing the people that are just graduated or have, are one year into practice and what the heck how did you yeah. get through that like that first year you know and so those are yeah. really interesting stories to tell yeah well that's the biggest thing for me is uh, yeah it was just just do it just, just yes the first few that you do are probably gonna suck <laughs> <laughs> I, remember, I, I remember the first one it was it was with my buddies down in Tauranga um that you know they'd, they'd just opened up their own practice and they hadn't expected to have to do that and um you know it was just like right well let's grab a couple of drinks whack the microphone on just see what happens you know i i have no idea or anticipation of, of what it's going to be but you know this is something that i really want to try so just go do it um and it worked and then you know asked another person they wanted to come on and just kind of it just kept growing from there which is which is wonderful for me because i love this this is really fun for me um, and then, you know, now I'm talking with you, who someone that I've been following for quite a while and, um, you know, had never thought that I'd get your podcast, uh, <laughs> you know, less than a year later, here we are having a conversation. And I, I mean, the access, the, the ability to do that kind of stuff, I think is incredible. I really do. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, what? Why did you decide to do this long form? I mean, you you just sit down and you have a conversation. Right, rather than doing yep. something very scripted or even planned out. Because uh, I listen to a lot of Joe Rogan, and that's what he does. Okay, I was <laughs> Just, wondering. I was going to say Joe Rogan or yeah. Tim Ferriss. That's yeah, that's yeah, the style. So my two most yeah, exactly. My my two most listened to podcasts are um, Joe Rogan and Tim Ferriss. I, I listen to that kind of stuff all the time, as well as a bunch of others. So all the chiropractic ones, you know, the um, car philanthropist, uh, mm -hmm, um, yeah. yours obviously. Um, Life by Design, um, and then the other ones that have kind of dropped, like Raw Cairo and, and Cairo Candy, that kind of stuff. I definitely have listened to them, but they're all, um, they're just in a different style, a different mm -hmm. style that I knew wasn't me, um, and something that I, I really wanted to have a conversation that was quite, you know, just very real. Um, like, this is two people having a conversation, this is natural flow, um, you know, we're not trying to sell anything, we're not trying to spin anything, this is two chiropractors meeting for the first time and just talking about their experiences and talking about their common interests. Um, and I think there's something really interesting about that. There's something really powerful about that. And if, if you look at um, Tim Ferriss or you, you look at Joe Rogan, that's that's their style as well. They, they go, we have X amount of time together. Let's just see what happens. And if it's a really interesting conversation, that's amazing. That's great. Um, but if it's not, then it's not. And that's, I don't know, That's I think that's just life. And for me, I find that far more compelling. Um, so that's the way I wanted to do it. Yeah, it's something I, I definitely am starting to lean towards that. When mm. I first started this, of course, my target is students who I know are busy and don't have time to spend. And so I was really trying to cut them down short. Um, yeah. But over time, you learn quite easily that the good stuff, some of the things that that we've talked about today, doesn't come if it's question after question after question. Um, Agreed. And so that's an interesting balance to strike. And I think Tim Ferriss's especially uh, was a great proof of concept in that he did very little editing. He did, uh, there was no script until the very end. Yeah. Um, yeah. And those episodes go for up to three hours. And Joe yeah, Rogan's exactly. are almost always three hours, I think. Yeah. Yeah, they're always really long. And I mean, that's kind of what I grew up on. Um, you know, the, the first podcast I listened to was The Chiro Philanthropist because I, I wanted more chiropractic stuff. I wanted stories. Um, so I started listening to that and it kind of grew from there. But because his, uh, his are short, his are that kind of they minute. Are, they are. You're, you're commuting, you want to get the maximum amount of information in a short period of time, uh, which is really beneficial for, for a lot of people. I and mean, it's, it's a great style. Obviously, it's very successful, it, it really works. Um, but yeah, I, I just wanted to do things a little bit different. Um, I was far more compelled because, you know, I, I commute, I drive, I'll listen to 20 minutes of a three hour episode and then mm -hmm. start it again when I get back in the car and I pick up where it left off. So, you know, I, I did that. So I assumed other people would, I mean, maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, you just kind of give it a go. So what, what works. how did you come across a, a chiropractic philanthropist was the first one that you found? Yeah. Was it recommended yeah. by somebody or did you go into iTunes? Yeah, I, I literally, um, this was kind of partway through second year, and it was super, uh, sorry, well, third year, my second year academically at the college. Um, and it was just super intense at the time. I think we were we had 18 exams that week, and my mind was just getting blown with just way too much, 
you know, physiology, anatomy, chiro science, you know, all that kind of stuff. I just needed a break. Um, so I was like, right, I'm at work today. I, I'm literally going to be putting boxes on pallets for the next two hours. <laughs> I want to. I want something to listen to that's not just music because I, I, you know, needed my brain to keep going because it was so intense at the time. So I just literally searched chiropractic podcasts. His was the first one that popped up. Mm, really, I downloaded his latest episode, um, and yeah, and just loved it. Um, I can't even remember who it was with. Uh, it was some upper cervical guy, um, but I just, it was just great. It was like, oh yeah, chiropractors talking about chiropractic. This is this is great. <laughs> this is this is what I was lacking. Um, and yeah, just kind of everything happened from there. Yeah. Yeah. So I first found uh, spinal column radio before oh, I started yeah, no, my podcast. I, yes. I got on thing very soon afterwards as well. Yeah. 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 And uh, he, he kind of does a blend where his are very long. I think his longest was yeah. seven hours, which never mind. I didn't wow. even try. Uh, but very, yeah, that's, pr- that's, very that's... produced as well. Um, yeah. But at that but he time, had such a beautiful radio voice. Oh yeah, he did. Great. Yeah, uh, and he contacted me after one of my, you know, my first two episodes, I think, and we chatted for just a bit. Uh, at the cool. time, his was pretty much the only one out there. I mean, there maybe had been one or two others, but since then, hmm. it's really grown. I think, especially after the chiropractic philanthropist and he did some training on teaching other chiropractors how to do podcasts. Yeah, and so those all became yeah. very popular too, and so now I think we're kind of reaching that, almost that tipping point to where it's becoming the norm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's just such a great way for people to be able to communicate, because you can just put the information out there. And uh, I was recording another episode yesterday, and what I was telling the guy afterwards is like, the, I mean, because he was worried about oh, I sounded dumb or whatever like you kind of get concerned because you're just not used to it right mm-hmm. i was like on, honestly the thing is you put it out there you you it's up there forever right or for as long as you keep the the source there you don't know like, well, i'm about to say a bj quote this wasn't expected <laughs> um plumber, but it's like you, you don't know you know how far reaching anything you say or do today is going to reach you know future generations or i'm um, muddle the quote up but but it's that whole effect right you know you might put up something now but in two years time a recent grad or a new chiropractor might come across that episode and you might say something that they really need to hear um and that's really hard to determine right now because you're just having a conversation Mm -hmm. um but i think that's really important and i i definitely got that from your podcast so over time you know i listen to it and and hear other people's experiences and and hear people talking about chiropractic and it, it had a profound effect on me um, which, which obviously has really helped me develop my certainty, my, my mm-hmm. ability to practice has um, definitely been helped because of this kind of media, this kind of platform. Yeah. Loving the new age. Yeah. Uh, do you have any plans to expand it to do videos or to do any other things like that? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm very fortunate. My, my girlfriend, my partner, we've been together a long time, 10 years. Um, she's uh, kind of like a social media design type person, um, so she does all my marketing stuff uh, for uh, free, nice. <laughs> which is really great. Um, so it's just it's just timing wise for the two of us, and then then also um, I'm I'm patient with it. I, I really want to be successful. I, I want it to be a really helpful platform that a lot of people can go to and, and get really excellent resources from um, and great stories from from chiropractors. Um, so yes, definitely want to create video. Uh, definitely want to create more media. Definitely want to create more resources. Um, but I, I'm quite happy to sit on it and let it develop and grow naturally in itself. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you can see if you go to my website, there's a, a video tab. It's got nothing on it. <laughs> yeah. I think day, I noticed know, that. I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I want to create that kind of content. Yeah. So it's, it's for me that's there to go that's something that I'm going to make happen. Um, and now is not quite the right time. Uh, don't have the time, resources, energy. I, I really am focusing that on my practice and, and building that and growing that. Um, but, you know, in the future, who knows? Well, in the future, once you start doing it, and hopefully I will start doing uh, some video other than just posting the podcast, maybe we should yeah. we should collaborate and we should do kind of what we were talking about is finding out what do people think chiropractic is. Let's do it. Walk the streets, ask yeah. some people. Yeah, I think it'd be I, awesome. I think, I think that'll be a really compelling video. I think that'll be really interesting. Are you? Do you follow many people on YouTube? Are you a fan of any channels? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 
I'm heavily into that kind of stuff. Um, okay. So I would definitely say that that's where, yeah, my passion lies. Like I, I think different chiropractors have different kind of expertise and passions outside of their chiropractic realm, mm-hmm. um, something that they can bring to the profession. And for me, something I'm obviously not great at because I haven't spent a lot of time at, but something I'm really passionate about is uh, the marketing and communication of chiropractic. Um, how do you get it out there to people? How is it perceived? Um, and that's something that I, I really want to be yeah. influential in yeah. changing. Have you come across Veritasium? It's a science channel. No. Okay, I'll send you a couple links because this is where yeah. I. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, this is where I have the. Uh, this ties into the idea of finding out what people think and what people understand about chiropractic and how chiropractic works. Mm. Um, and I think it's. Uh, you you didn't say it in these words, but I think the issue is, and the American Chiropractic Association is really struggling with this, is what is the public perception of chiropractic and how do we improve that? Yeah. And uh, and I think there's some ways that we can do it with new media, uh, with podcasts, with YouTube videos, and yeah. different things like that. Uh, and my challenge is, and maybe, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is just that doubt creeping up, but I don't feel that I'm very good in front of the camera. I love being behind the camera. And sure. uh, again, I'm more of, I like the technical stuff, the technical aspect yeah. of it. Um, so it'd be interesting to, to, to see what happens if we can find people who are, you know, love having those conversations and being in front of the camera and, uh, and just getting out there in the real world and finding out what people think. Yeah. No, I, I 100% agree. I think that'll be really compelling. Very, very interesting. Cool well, project. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll be, I'll be following you for sure. Yeah. It'll be nice to do, uh, do some collaboration in that way. Yeah. Oh, certainly. Certainly would be. Well, we've been going for about an hour now, other than the, <laughs> good, the crashing of Skype. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. This has been a really fun conversation and learning about just is- chiropractic down under. Yeah, it's been great to catch up. I mean, uh, yeah, like I said before, I've been following your podcast for a while now, so it's a bit of a dream come true for me. So, <laughs> well, I appreciate uh, it's been that. A r- r- real pleasure coming on. Well, I think you're doing a great job. I mean, I first saw yours and I thought, damn it, now I've got competition, <laughs> so I've got to step up my <laughs> <That's> game. <right. laughs> yeah. yeah. So rather than that, that's an easy way. Um, who, who was it recently? I was talking to. It was uh, they called it co-opetition. So cooperative competitions. So, yes, so instead yes. of competing, we, we can work together. Well, exactly. Yeah. And that's exactly why I, I wanted to do this together is just to, yeah. uh, rather than fighting against, just work together. Yeah. And I think there's room for everybody. I think that's what's so fun is um, different personalities and different topics appeal to different people. And there's plenty of plenty of audience to go around. And I think that's one of the lessons that chiropractors need to learn as well, at least here in the States, because people are really fighting with each other to try to gain patients. Um, yeah. And when you look at, you know, one street where there's four clinics on each corner, but each one is specializing differently, you know, and they're st- but they're still trying to get patients from each other. And I think of that collaboration or what was it? Co- co- how did you put it? Co- Co- co-opetition 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 uh, yeah. would do a lot to improve the profession uh yeah. in so many ways i believe so too here yeah. online as well well thanks it was so fun to chat with you and next time yeah. we're uh, down in new zealand i'll let you know if we're when we're Just headed down there and maybe we can yeah. get in touch i've been wanting to visit uh new zealand chiropractic college to actually get there in person so but with her being on the south island her family in the south island it, it'll have to be kind of a separate trip yeah yeah certainly yeah. well anytime very welcome awesome well thanks a lot you enjoy your weekend hey, nathan thank you so much absolute pleasure really really fun okay talk Catch to you later. Later. take care